restrictions. Yes, hello again. As you all know, we are dealing with addictions, and that issue requires a good cooperation with the states and the governments, especially when you think about our geography and the world's situation. Many things are tried to be handled by the government, but we don't know to what extent they do these things correctly or not. We may make our own comments, but state owns many areas that we try to work. It is an advantage and disadvantage at the same time, because we try to find a space for ourselves. It requires a capacity that you can function in a place where the state does not function. Maybe you have to control the process from the very beginning, from the stage that the policies are determined or the documents are written. You need to include yourselves into the process from the very beginning. I have been working in the social policies for 20 years. I'll be talking about my experiences and also I will add some concrete examples of Turkish uh, Green Crescent's activities and results of our activities. Because wherever you go or in your home countries, you work with some partners and those partners are very similar to our partners, such as Ministry of Health or um, Ministry of Finance, government. You have to work with some state agents or institutions. You can name it however you like. I'm sure you, ha you are familiar to Turkey. You know some information about Turkey. But in order for you to remember some of our features, I'd like to give you this background. Turkey has approximately 80 million population and $856 billion is our GDP. GDP per capita is 10,000, approximately 10,000. Mid-level or mid and up level is our revenue level. And Gini coefficient is 40.2. And life expectancy is 75. So we are close to developed countries in terms of life expectations. I'm sure there are few people from uh, medical sector. Addiction is a problem, and that problem is very important for the projects that we are going to carry out in the future. First of all, addiction problem requires a holistic approach. It is not a medical problem, or it is not by itself a youth problem, or an addiction does not belong to children. It's not related to communication only. So we have to bring everything together with a holistic approach. Or it does not belong to any specific geography. It does not make sense for a specific age group. It also is related to different age groups because different age groups might have different problems. Therefore, we have to determine a strategy based on different age group characteristics and geographical conditions. So this problem is a multidisciplinary problem. And uh, we have to take the participation of the people that we need to work with. I'm not talking about professionals. Support of the family is needed, and participation of the youngsters is a must. Different levels or stratas of the society must take place in our problem-solving attempts. Of course, we have to settle a base for our cooperation with other organizations. Most important thing is to 
define right projects for right groups. As Turkish Green Crescent, we are focusing on the rights organization for rights people, states, institutions, public institutions, non-governmental organizations can be coordinated. They can take part in our projects because this problem cannot be solved by a non-governmental organization by itself. We have to focus on different actors for problem solving. Yes. While I work with the state or public institutions, while I or while you work with public or state institutions, you have to apply five principles. And this is what I accept for my works. So if you are careful at these principles, if you take these principles into consideration, I'm sure you will get the result in your projects. Let's say, if there is a problem and that problem is a sustaining problem, the thing that you have to do is to aim for a change. You have to focus on changes. Unless you focus on changes, you cannot get the result that you desire. If there is a problem about education or training, then training or education implementation must be totally changed or an approach must be changed. Let's say you have been applying a certain approach uh, focusing on safety. However, if it is a failure, you have to change it. So those approaches or implementation methodologies, whatever you do must be changed. And the second principle is about coordination. As I've told you, coordination is the most crucial thing in our area because problem is a multidisciplinary problem and it requires a multidisciplinary approach. Yes, addiction is a health problem, but it has social dimensions, educational dimensions, and other dimensions as well, and it can lead to different problems. Addiction is a problem, but it is a result of many other problems. Therefore, it requires different disciplines. It is a matter of communication. If we can control it, if we can settle a mechanism for the coordination of these structures, I'll give you some examples uh, that you can understand better, I think, because I'm sure with concrete examples, you can visualize certain things better. So with a better coordination, we can get the results of a non-governmental organization activity. We carried out a survey and tried to find out the strengths and weaknesses of our institution. And the strongest part of our institution is coordination. In the morning, Mr. Isam mentioned some modules. And this is our fundamental program. That program was designed by uh, teachers, some academics and Ministry of Youth and Sports and Ministry of Education has been led by us, but we are not the operators in the field. We do not go to schools and provide trainings. We do not deal with each children uh, or we do not make the communication easier. However, we can coordinate this process very well, very successfully. There is already an operational burden on your shoulder, and it cannot be bare. Uh, it cannot be uh, carried by 
a non-governmental organization by itself because you cannot find a financing support if you want to do it solely. But you can use human resources of the state if you can manage that coordination in a beautiful way. OK, cooperation. After coordination, cooperation comes. Maybe you can think about Turkish Crescent. Uh, OK, the president supports Turkish Crescent, Turkish Green Crescent. So Turkish Green Crescent can solve every problem because the president is a big support. Of course, it's a big support. We can do many things with that power behind us. But everything that we carry out on the field is based on a good cooperation. Nothing is compulsory. Everything is based on voluntary acts and protocols. So there is a protocol, and inside that protocol, by the way, this is very crucial, there are obligations and responsibilities determined and defined concretely, and everybody acts based on their work task definitions. But that cooperation must be supported with a legal framework. I mean, it can be a legislation or a regulation or a protocol. However, you can do this, but you have to do it in order to prevent problems in the field. This is one of our strengths, contribution, because while you develop public policies in Western countries or in developed countries, societies attach greatest importance to contribution and social participation. Uh, local administration, NGOs, all other actors must take part in this process. And the social participation can only be managed through an NGO support. So while you prepare a policy document and implement that document's principles, you have to contribute in the process, and you have to be welcoming the participation of the society. When the strategy is prepared, you need to be there. You need to be included in the preparation of the strategy. And after that, you have to be taking part actively in the implementation. We are strong in our field because of two reasons. First of all, we are eligible to be involved in the process in the very beginning of this strategy preparation. Second of all, we have very big operations and we take important parts in the operational activities. So these two can make you very strong and powerful. So after a while, uh, you may not need feel uh, you may not feel the need of a political power behind you uh, you need to feel and know that you are the voice of the society and you have to be taking part in all this process and after that communication when we talk about public health problems Communication should not be ignored because it is really important. I would like to give you an example. I'm sure you know some important items in Turkish agenda. We are dealing with huge problems with respect to synthetic drugs. Many youngsters have died. Maybe drug or substance use trial has decreased, but in the uh, deaths caused by synthetic drugs is very much in Turkey. And we are higher in number in uh, all Europe because of synthetic drug problem. 
we are losing our youngsters, and it creates a big problem on the society. It creates chaos on the society. It is accepted as a big problem. So at this very stage, communication becomes more and more important. Which communication model must be used? How to communicate this problem to the society must be answered. So we are dealing with disadvantages groups, and there needs a big requirement to find out the best way to communicate that kind of groups. Our age is an age of communication, a communication and media. There are many technological instruments, social media or others, and you have to be using them and managing crisis very well. What I tell you is not only related about drugs, tobacco, cigarettes, alcohol, behavioral addictions. We use the same methodology as well, but in order to provide you a more concrete example, I would like to show you what we have done in recent years in our working principles. You can see them on this slide. Up until 2014, to the matter of uh, fact, actually this is not a very uh, far past. It was only three years ago. It was perceived as a safety problem. If the police, if the law enforcement intervenes in the situation on the streets and does not let dealers, uh, it won't create a problem. How many countries think like this? But in other countries, there is no such a perception, right? It is accepted as a narcotic or a safety issue. In the past, it was like this. Even the Minister of Social Policies in the past used to think that an addiction problem was a safety problem or a supply and demand problem. Uh, so they thought that if the supply had been eliminated, then there wouldn't be any demand. But the demand increases day by day. We have to change that perception. In order to change that perception, we had an offering. We said that this is a public health problem. And all these strategy documents were thrown away. As of 2014, addiction problem has been accepted as a public health problem. It has been reviewed, and we explained to everyone that the strategies must be written from the very scratch. And in 2014, we prepared a new strategy and action plan. And after that, activities and actions were defined. Actually, this new strategic plan created an impact on many things. For example, in the past, training activities were mainly for policemen or law enforcement officers. Um, law enforcement officers or policemen used to go to schools to talk about the harms and dangers of drugs and substances. Uh, actually, it, it was not very applicable. We changed that philosophy and we let the policeman do his job. We said that the job of the policeman was to fight against suppliers and criminals and industry representatives of a drug. But the treatment, rehabilitation, or the prevention of this problem should not be done by the policeman. We changed that philosophy and we changed the activities beneath that mentality. Of course, Turkey is a big country. 
So in that sense, uh, as I've told you, there is 8 million population and there are different regions in Turkey. There are many cities, many areas in Turkey. Policies are determined in the very center and those policies must be implemented in the local areas. It requires a big coordination. Who does what, when, and how must be defined. And we established such a structure that there is a high commission in the fight against drug. And we have presidents, prime ministers, eight prime eight ministers take part in the commission's meetings twice a year that commission comes together and the president of the commission on health family and social works and parliament members uh, take part in the commission and there is technical committee that the experts work and the most important thing the similar structure is also settled at the provincial levels. So coordination is very crucial in order not to create problems on the field. So this was what we suggested and it was implemented. Cooperation. I told you about ideal cooperation. Yes, we have a strategy. It has a certain perspective, but if you have a strategy, you have to define some activities that you can realize the strategy. Otherwise, your strategy can only be on the paper. It cannot be actualized. For example, if you want to decrease drug consumption rate by 20 percent, you have to write down the activities which make you achieve your goals. But in the past, we had many strategy documents, but they were only about words and sentences. They were saying, yes, so we would decrease drug use by 20 percent, but there were no methodologies or the targets or time table and responsible authorities, actors, nothing was determined. For example, here at our strategic document, Turkish Green Crescent responsibility is defined, Turkish um, Green Crescent and also other ministers and their roles and responsibilities, everything is defined. So on the very left, you can see some strategies and very next you can see main responsible institution who reports to whom who supports whom who supports which cooperation process everything is defined if you can achieve in establishing this cooperation structure, I'm sure you can collect the fruits of your efforts. Of course, here you have big chance. Actually, this is our big chance. We have a lot of content, and those content is very reliable training program is the broadest program in the world in its own area it is related to addiction any kind of addiction it is the uh, broadest spectrum of prevention programs turkey has that program and you can adopt that program you can localize that program into your own countries we have spent two years in the past in order to create that program, but you can adapt it to your countries. 
how to measure that program, how to communicate the measures. Everything is defined, but you are only going through an adaptation program, adaptation process, that's all. Uh, so partners, parties, actors, everything is determined in our program. And you can think of your own country situation and adapt everything to your own situation. And here you can see some of actions and responsibilities. On the slide, Turkey's 2015 Drug Enforcement Strategy Document, Immediate Action Plan Topics. We have established a free counseling and support line in combating drugs where professionals provide service 24-7. And we have also hotline it has its own functioning system so this is our responsibility and we make the implementation based on the strategic document we take the participation of different society uh, social groups private sector business representatives can give grants or supports to us or a celebrity, a football player or a singer can come and support our programs. So thanks to their support, you get the support from the society, their fans, uh, the audience. They also want to support you. It is not only from your side, but also from the society's side, uh, there's a big effort. It is very valuable for the state, and NGOs can express their purposes very comfortably. OK, communication must be effective. Communication strategy must be created, telling what to which people must be defined for your own visibility, for your own works. You have to mm, uh, write a, a strategy. We are an NGO. We have to be known by the people because the better we are known, the more we are known, the better that we will be in the future in our projects. Communication side, visibility side, popularity side, or message delivery side must be planned in each and every activity that we carry out. This is how we work. Specifically to the drugs. Uh, by the way, you have to have a policy next to the policy of the state. Uganda Green Crescent or Kenya Green Crescent should have their own policies. What do I defend for drug? Or maybe state might want um, death penalty for drug users, drug dealers. But, but what is your argument, you have to come up with an answer for the thing that you make the advocacy for. Then you have to show your loyalty and commitment to your policy. I may say one thing or wise central manager may say something else about drug policies. It is, of course, inconsistent and it harms the corporate image. It is not a good thing for our stakeholders as well. Therefore, we have to define our own policies. We have a policy fighting against the drug use and we have another policy for different addictions that is related to approaches. Maybe you can adopt our approaches to your own countries and you have to announce your political arguments. It can be about gambling or technology. What do you think? Is technology harmful? Shouldn't we use technology at all? Or 
Should we be against technology users? What should be our approach? How to cooperate with the country? So these issues will be the topics uh, that you are going to deal with all the time. Therefore, policy document must be developed if you want to work effectively. And it should be in consistency with international institutions' works. There is UNDP, UN, United Nations, OECD, and other international uh, organizations such as EMCCD or World Health Organizations. There are many organizations that you can work with in the international arena. And these are the institutions that follow the, the agenda really well, the updated topic. So by uh, taking references from their documents, uh, we've uh, come up with our own uh, politics document, policy document, excuse me. Well, there are different approaches here, as you see, about punishment, especially. In the world, in the United Nations, for instance, in 2016, as you all know, United Nations had a, a special drugs session, uh, which we call the UNGAS uh, process. And from all corners of the world, countries came here and explain their agenda about drugs and they've got really different approaches some say that it should be banned it's a crime and others say that uh, let us um, make it free 100 percent so the world is uh, still uh, talking about uh, discussing drugs even though you have prohibited bans so let's not ban so they say and also they said that cigarette also kills people or else alcohol also has the same uh, effect on the mind and the body so they say defend that a drug should be legitimized and in the world today in the united states in canada there are certain amounts and dosages of drugs uh, which are free actually in many areas of these countries so we should have a stance in such a context we should have a saying and all the policies that we generate should be uh, binding with the uh, stance our stance our sayings different from dealers the users are not punished, but we defend for their rehabilitation and their treatment. Even if there is a punishment on the side of the users, it should uh, direct the user to be rehabilitated, to be treated. Uh, we are not supporting the legitimization of drugs. It should not be free. And prevention. Human rights approach is important, especially the ones who make money out of tobacco and drugs. Them that being, uh, they they should be directed to other sectors. I'm I'm talking about the users actually, not the industry. By the way, uh, that uh, try to finance themselves, users. They should be, di be directed to other uh, sectors. And a multilateral solidarity is important. Uh, we have the Turkish and English versions of these documents. So while determining something, coming up with a policy, first of all, uh, we should have a, a common stance. Because sometimes we work with a person, you have a consultant, or as a trainer, for instance, in your program, they have a tendency to, to say totally different things. So we have to be really clear with our own policies about our stance. I don't want to take too much of your time. In general, I have tried to explain the, our own policy documents and how actually we generated it and how we came up with a common stance. If you've got questions, I could answer them or 
URLs, these documents, most of them, the English versions are available. You can access them. Okay, thank you very much. We should keep a nice meeting.